Today I'm making the classic Davison house meal of fried pork chops. And I say it's a classic house meal for us because my husband Ian, well, his middle name is pork chop. Ian Porkchop Davison is what we call him. That's because he loves pork chops above all other cut of meat. He orders them whenever we go out to dinner. We cook them all the time on the grill, seared in a cast iron skillet. But this way, fried with some corn flakes on the outside is his absolute favorite. And the name of the game when making breaded pork chops is getting that breading to stick to the pork. And the way you do that is by using something called bound breading. And that means you coat the pork three times. Now traditionally, you'd coat it first in flour, then in egg, then in breadcrumbs. That's a traditional bound breading. We're gonna do a variation on that today, but make it a little stickier, a little tackier. So instead of flour in the first dish, we're gonna use cornstarch. And we're gonna use a third of a cup cornstarch, and as with any sort of breading scenario, you want nice shallow dishes so that you can go from one to the next with your piece of meat or fish. So into this first one goes cornstarch. Now for the second dip, again, traditionally it's egg. Today we're using buttermilk, which adds a lovely tang. It really helps the pork chops brown and it's nice and thick and it coats well with the cornstarch. We're gonna give that a little flavor which is easy to do by adding just a little Dijon mustard. Actually, it's more than a little Dijon mustard. It's a whopping two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And Dijon mustard and pork chops are a classic combination. All right, now we're gonna add just a little bit of garlic to the buttermilk. That just adds a little bit of flavor. I like using raw garlic because I like that fresh, harsh bite. You could use garlic powder if you wanted. And to get the raw garlic into the buttermilk, I'm gonna use a rasp style grater, which just turns the garlic into an easy puree that incorporates right into the buttermilk. There we go. Knock it off the back of the grater. Okay, so that's the buttermilk. All right, now for the last dish, bring out the corn flakes, because I love their sweet flavor and that crunch on the pork chops is delicious. But we have to grind them to a crumb. And I have in the past put them in a plastic bag and just whacked the heck out of them with a rolling pin, which is seriously fun. But if you pull out the food processor, you get a much finer texture, which I like. So we're gonna have three cups of corn flakes. I'm gonna add them right to the food processor. All right, I always keep these in the pantry. Nobody eats it as cereal. We just use it for pork chops. Now to this, we're also gonna add a bit more cornstarch. Again, that cornstarch will fill in the gaps between the cornflakes and just make an adhesive and crunchy coating. So another third cup of cornstarch, adding it right to the food processor. And we're also gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper, about a half a teaspoon of each. There we go. I'm gonna grind these up. You're looking for a uniform texture. Let's take a look. Oh, that's perfect. You can see there's no big pieces of corn flakes left. The cornstarch is really mixed in, and the pepper, <laughs> you can smell that too. So they're nicely seasoned. All right, into a big bowl it goes. Set this aside. And now we're ready to bread the pork chops. All right, so let's bring out the star of the show, the pork chops. All right, so these are boneless pork chops. You can use bone in if you want, but given that we're breading them and I love to eat every piece of breading, uh, I like using boneless here. Now I also, you can see that these pork chops are extraordinarily thin. They're just about half an inch thick and that's perfect because if they're much thicker, they take too long to cook and the coating will burn before they're cooked through. So these weigh about three to four ounces each. And if you can't find boneless pork chops that are this thin, you can ask the butcher to cut them for you or cut them yourself. Just buy a boneless pork loin. You can freeze it for five to 10 minutes to get it nice and firm. Use a sharp knife and just cut your own pork chops. Then you know it's from the same cut of meat and they're the same thickness. All right, we're gonna put a little salt and pepper on both sides. All right, salt and pepper on both sides. Now for the best trick. I'm actually gonna slide them off the tray, still on their parchment paper. 
And believe it or not, now I'm gonna score them. Put the pork chops on a board. You can leave them on the parchment paper if you have it. And we're gonna score the surface. That just makes some crags to help all that coating stick. So using the tip of your knife, I'll do one and then I'll show you how I can do this efficiently. You wanna use the tip of your knife and you only want about 16th of an inch down. You're gonna to wanna to go in one direction and then the other direction. Just a little cross hatch and that's it. Now if you line your pork chops up, you can kind of do it all at once. So here, I'll show you what I mean. You gotta do this on both sides. So just pretend it's one big old piece of meat. And then you do it in the other direction. All right, now we'll do the second side. You can do this before or after you season it with salt and pepper. Doesn't matter, as long as you do it before you start your breading. Now for the second side. The only thing you want to not do is go too deep. You just want to score the surface. That's it. So the pork chops are ready to be breaded. Now I'm going to take a wire rack, put it back on the baking sheet. And now once the pork chops are breaded, we're going to let them rest for 10 minutes on the sheet before we cook them. It's really easy to go from one to the next to the next to your landing zone. Now I always get my fingers fully coated here with this stuff. Uh, a lot of people who are really um, much more mindful about not making a mess use one hand for wet and one hand for dry. I start off thinking that, but then I just get to a big old mess. So I've learned over the years that once it goes into the wet, I have to use tongs. You wanna let it, the excess buttermilk drip off. Oh, you can smell the mustard right into the crumbs. I usually do two at a time. I've also learned over the years, I love this cornstarch dredge at the beginning because it makes it super crisp, but it has a tendency to clump up. So using a pastry brush just to get into all the nooks and crannies and then brush away any excess is pretty important. Coat it. Mm. And that buttermilk just sticks so nicely to the cornstarch. And then if you notice, this pan's a little different than these shallow pans. It's got a taller side. That's because when it's in the crumbs, I like to do the shake. And it just keeps my fingers from getting too dirty because the crumbs will pop up on the other side. Okay, and there's one. Shake it off. And we're going to use every bit of these crumbs. So try not to leave too much excess on each pork chop. All right, so working two at a time now. Make sure you get it fully coated in cornstarch so you don't want to see any pink. There we go. Now time for tongs. And drippy, drippy into the crumbs. pretty messy when I do this. It's hard to be super tidy with cornstarch. Sometimes I actually make a double batch of these because once they're breaded and raw, they freeze like a dream and you can have dinner in a snap. So make the most of your mess or involve the kids and just make it fun. I'm a clean as you go kind of person. All right, that's out of the way. Buttermilk with tongs. Oh yeah. Into the crumbs. All right, the last two pork chops. Shake a shake a. Make sure all the meat is covered, especially with the last few when you don't have a ton of crumbs to work with. Take your time, make sure it's fully coated. And the last chop. There we go. Perfect. All right, we got all that work out of the way, and that's the hardest part of the recipe. Now, before we cook these, we want to let these chops sit for at least 10 minutes. That just makes sure that that coating will adhere and not fall off in the pan as we fry them. So get cleaned up, come back, and fry up the chops. We're going to cook them in a non-stick skillet. And I have some vegetable oil in here, about a third of a cup. Now, how much oil you use really depends on the size of your pan. This is a 12-inch pan, which is good because you can fit four chops at a time. So I'll do these in two batches. You just want the oil to cover the bottom of the pan. And I have it over medium-high heat, and I'm looking for it to be shimmering, which it is. I've got my non-stick tongs. That way, I don't scratch my non-stick skillet. I'm going to gently put the chops into the oil and they just take a couple minutes on each side because they're so thin they're going to cook through by the time the coating is nice and brown. 
And again, for oil, we're using vegetable oil here. I'm actually using safflower oil. You can use vegetable oil. Peanut oil tastes really good, as it does with anything that's fried. But you don't want to use an olive oil, because that olive oil will impart too heavy a flavor. So stick with a vegetable canola or safflower oil. Been a few minutes on this first side, and I'm going to check and see how the browning's coming along. And this handy tool, it looks kind of silly. It's a fish spatula. It's a non stick fish spatula, so it's good for non stick pans. I got this in the house just a few months ago, and we have used it non stop. All right, so gently lift it up. Oh, perfect. Nice and golden. That is what a fried pork chop should look like. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit for the second side just because I can see that that skillet's getting a bit hot and we don't want to burn the second side. And a few more minutes, we can do the second batch. That second side is frying away. Oh, you see that? That's what you're looking for. A nice golden coating on both sides. That is a perfectly cooked chop. I'm going to take them out of the pan. I'm going to let them drain on paper towels. Drain away any of that excess oil. Turn the pan off for a second. All right, so let's take a look here. Gorgeous. See how that's a little extra brown on the edge? That one's mine. I like them a little extra brown. And I'm going to keep these warm in the oven while we cook the second batch. All right, so now let's get the pork chops out of the oven. Oh yeah, oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Nice and crisp. Again, platter style. Oh yeah. Time to make a plate. Oh, where's my pork chop? There's my pork chop. Yes. All right, so, oh, can't wait to dig into this pork chop. And also, when um, Ian and my daughter eat pork chops, they you know, they admire the lovely crisp coating and then they douse the whole thing in applesauce. So it does taste good with applesauce. I'm a non-applesauce and pork chop person. So for me, I just eat it straight. Mm. Mm-hmm, that's it. It's the perfect fried pork chop. The flavor of the cornflakes is a little sweet. That coating is super crunchy. And there you have it, the Davison Pork Chop Dinner. See you next time. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're excited to cook this week. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You can get today's recipes and more for free at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash julia at home.